In this series of videos, we're going to discuss the electronic structures of atoms and the periodic properties of the elements that follow from that electronic structure. So our goal is to be able to recognize and describe patterns in the structures of electrons within atoms, their energies and where they tend to be located, and translate those patterns into patterns in the behaviors of atoms in their elemental form in in the elements and really we're going to dig into the quantum model of the atom as the modern and as far as we know right now most correct model of electronic structure within the atom that we have and of course this serves as a foundation right for the electronic structures of molecules which we're going to discuss in more detail in later videos and so having this solid foundation of atomic structure is going to be important for thinking about electronic structure as we start putting atoms together in molecules. To survey this unit, we're going to start by discussing electromagnetic energy, or what you're more familiar with probably as light, because the interaction between light and matter was critical for elucidating the quantum nature of the atom, and light is a profoundly quantum phenomenon in its interactions with matter. And so a, a firm understanding of light is going to help us understand the quantum nature of electrons in atoms, for example. Then we'll discuss the Bohr model of the atom, which was sort of a proto-quantum model, which incorporated some of the ideas about the discrete nature of energy levels and things like this that are still found in the quantum model. Then we'll discuss the development of the quantum theory of the atom, the electronic structures of atoms and writing electron configurations, kind of a picture or a map of where the electrons are located inside the atom. And then finally, we'll discuss periodic variations in the properties of the elements which follow from the electron configurations. So there are patterns in electron configurations that are translated in periodic variations in the properties of the elements. Now, let's talk about light. Light has classically been viewed as a wave, and it's also known as electromagnetic radiation. Historically, classically, it was thought of as an oscillating wave of electric and magnetic fields with the electric and magnetic fields at right angles to one another. In thinking about light as a wave, we can associate some kind of fundamental quantities belonging to all waves to light waves, and two in particular that are important are the wavelength represented with the Greek letter lambda and the frequency represented with the Greek letter nu. Wavelength is a measure of the length of the wave from crest to crest or trough to trough. And the frequency is a measure of the number of oscillations that the wave engages in per unit time. So cycles per second, cycles per minute, something along those lines. When we multiply wavelength and frequency, we get a length times an inverse time or a length per time, which is a velocity or speed. And so this constant C is the speed of light, and this is a constant value for light. It's equal to 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. In this figure, we can see a variety of representations of different light waves, and we can see, for example, a de decrease in the wavelength as we go from lambda 1 to lambda 2 to lambda 3, and we can also see an increase in the frequency from 3 to 6 to 12 cycles per, sec per second, or hertz. This unit hertz, by the way, corresponds to cycles per second, and hertz is often abbreviated HZ. The wavelengths and frequencies of light waves span a huge range, and there are a variety of different regions of the so-called electromagnetic spectrum corresponding to different types of light. The light we can see is but one small sliver of the massive span of the electromagnetic spectrum right here, close to the middle. To the right-hand side here, we have longer wavelengths and lower frequencies, starting with infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. As we move to the left from the visible region, we have shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays. As we'll discuss in more detail in a little bit, the wavelength and frequency of a light wave are related to its energy, and energy is directly proportional to the frequency of the light. So moving from right to left, we're looking at increasing energy of light, gamma rays being the highest in energy and radio waves being the lowest, and an increasing frequency as we move from right to left. And of course, wavelength, because the speed of light is a constant, must be inversely related to both energy and frequency. So as we move from left to right, this corresponds to increasing wavelength. 
An important characteristic of waves that we need to take account of when thinking of light as a wave is the fact that waves can interfere with one another. If you've ever seen the wave patterns produced by two boats collide with one another in water, you're familiar with this idea. Light waves can also engage in interference, and this can lead to some interesting phenomena. For example, if a series of light waves emanating from a set of closely spaced points are allowed to interfere with one another, one light wave coming into a source can be split into a variety of spots through a phenomenon called diffraction. To foreshadow a little bit, we will come to understand all matter, and in particular electrons, as having wave-like nature. And in understanding the wave-like nature of matter, it's important to understand the concept of a standing wave. A standing wave is essentially a wave subject to a boundary condition, where on the edges of the wave, the value must go to zero. So a standing wave, for example, can have any number of oscillations between the two outside points. However, the value of the wave must go to zero at the outside edges. This is what defines a standing wave. And these points where the wave goes to zero, including both the outside edges and anywhere where the wave crosses zero as it oscillates, these points are called nodes. And we'll use this terminology node to refer to matter waves, electron waves, quote unquote, here shortly. So keep this term in mind. If you think about a string or a jump rope oscillating up and down, nodes are the places where the string appears to kind of stand still as the wave moves up and down on either side of the node. 